Good, av good afternoon, everyone, and uh, Florian and all the other team. Thank you for inviting me uh, uh, to be part of this uh, of this uh, forum, and uh, and I'm very pleased and very honored to 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 share with you some uh, few thoughts, particularly considering the theme of the day, which is safety, technology, and uh, and then human dimensions. Simply because these three elements uh, has always been uh, my personal, but not only one, not only for me, but for a number of you, I'm sure, uh, drivers throughout uh, our professional um, professional life. Uh, I have two challenges. The first one is to make sure that you don't believe that I have uh, cut and paste what Florian just said, because I didn't know what he was going to say. But I'm sure you will see a lot of common points, which I think is great things to see because it really shares that we have several things in common. And the most important one is we share in common uh, the, the safety value, which is really what uh, brings us uh, today. And uh, maybe could we send the slides? There was one slide. Yes. Why I'm saying this, uh, I will start with sharing with you a very positive challenge. Uh, my second challenge is not to burn too much uh, of, of the time which, which have been given. The first challenge, which is very positive, is in the middle of the chart. It shows to you the very superb uh, activity that the aviation, the air transport system is enjoying. Every day, and only looking at the Airbus Worldwide Fleet, we, we, we have more than 41,000 flights per day. More than 6 million of passengers flying on an Airbus per day. Meaning that if you put together the whole aviation system, every year we transport more than 4 billion of people. More than 2.2 for Airbus. Every two years, the aviation system transports the equivalent of the worldwide population. If internet is correct, the first paying passengers uh, took the air 110 years ago. Who 110 years ago would have dreamed about a system that would transport every two years the equivalent of the worldwide population and very safely? So I think we need to think about that to put things into perspective in terms of, of a very nice challenge, very nice achievement and very nice challenge because the traffic demand, the appetite for travel is, is there. People want to be uh, to connect with others. So it, it, it's a good point to have. Now let's think about the today challenges. Um, today challenges, we all know them, we all face them. Uh, we, we talk about the VUCA, VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Volatile because we are running crisis after crisis. It looks like the world now is in a dynamic for years now, that there will never be a kind of stable situation without one crisis somewhere in the world. Not necessarily an aviation crisis, but a crisis of some sort that affects all of us. Uncertain. Why uncertain? Because we need to decide facing crisis on things for which we have absolutely no guarantee that it's the right decision. It's absolutely clear. Complex. We are all interdependent. One thing happening on a given crisis, which is not necessarily aviation related, will impact us. Like it or not. Ambiguous because those crises are exposing us in an environment which is really unfamiliar to us when we are not subject matters for everything. Let's think about the COVID. The COVID, in my view, is, is a good example of that. When the COVID crisis came in, it was first an health and safety, worldwide crisis. For how long? Question mark. No one was able to say it. From an aviation perspective, the fleet was grounded very quickly. What shall we do? What type of decision? in such complex, dynamic, uncertain environment. What type of decision shall we take? We question ourselves as an example within Airbus. Shall we stop manufacturing planes? Because airlines will ground the plane, they don't need it. And for how long? But if we do that, it's very easy. But think about the consequences to the supply chain and the huge, huge challenge to have it back. So we decided to cut by two the production, to keep the supply chain live. For how long? We took a risk. It's all about this VUCA world. Still about the COVID, the consequences, we are all paying them today. We, we have lost on a sudden uh, basis uh, a, 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 a significant number of experienced people. 
early retirement, etc. And to bring back this experience takes a lot of, lot of time, a lot of energy. So it just illustrates this VUCA world. We have, uh, all of us, uh, we are facing the current uh, war situation in Ukraine. We know the consequences on raw material, for example, which affect aviation. We see the threat coming from uh, the Middle East uh, region, spoofing, jamming of GPS. It has an impact on aviation, of course. All the political new elections here and there with all their consequences. We are really in this crisis after crisis type of uh, dimension. So this is clearly a challenge we need to face because the traveling public still want to travel. The demand is there. All this in a context where the today norm for accident is zero. This became the norm. This is the expectation. By the way, none of us in this room, when we board a plane, are telling us, oh, this is not going to be a good day. No. It's printed in our brain that we're going to arrive safely. Therefore, the risk of, and you said it, Florian, the risk number one I perceive is complacency. Being there, done that, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Well, when we think about the risk exposure, are we sure it is so okay? So technology, what about technology? I think no one will dispute the fact that technology has been a demonstrated asset to aviation. How to transport per year 4 billion of passengers without the help of technology? To manage the people on ground, to manage the air traffic management, to be able to have so many flights per day. With the uh, dispatch reliability we know, with the uh, reliability, globally speaking, that we, we know. Without technology, we would not have been able to do that. Technology, of course, in terms of airplane performance, engine performance, if you think about the uh, 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 evolution of engines, it's absolutely remarkable. Uh, and in particular, not only in terms of performance per se uh, for consumption in terms of range, but also from an environmental viewpoint. Minus 15%, it's the comparison between the today 320 engine versus the previous 320 engines. So in 15 years, 15% 15 of reduction. It's just an illustration. Noise reduction. The one of us who enjoy being close to an airport with a 727 or whatever GT9 type of engines can make the difference with the today engines. Super prediction. Safety. Safety, I think it's a no-brainer. Each time we have been, as an industry, been able to develop, to implement some design-related safety barrier to mitigate operational safety threat, it was a success story. Ground proc swelling system. We have decreased the number of EFIT. TCAS. We have significantly improved the situation with regard to in-flight collision. Angle of attack protection. All the fly by wire fleets, starting from the 320 to the 220, 777, 787. With these families of airplanes, which is the one making the number now, by the way, in terms of flight activities, we have reduced the fatal accident rate in 30 years by a ratio of 30. 30 years ago, in 1994, uh, I remember the figure was basically one fatal accident every million of flights. With these families of airplanes, it is one for 33 million of flights. So it's a no-brainer that safety brings a huge, huge safety benefit to the air transport system, and it will continue to do so. I have in mind the ATM, of course. To manage just such type of traffic, you need technology to support the air traffic management. It's absolutely a no-brainer. So what are the today's and tomorrow opportunities? I'd like to share with you two, maybe two, two pillars on that one. The first one about technology. Uh, it's obvious that technology will still be there. Technology opportunity will be taken. It is really a continuous journey. Uh, uh, and, and we aim at filling the gap. By filling the gap, I mean, what are the today's safety threats that we, we know for which we don't have yet a design solution? Knowing that the data demonstrate with the evolution of accident recall from one generation of airplane to another, the data demonstrate that each time we introduce a design feature to address a safety threat, it helps saving the day. Fatigue, you mentioned it. This is really something that we are all observing. I think it's obvious. What type of things can we provide to assist the crew? And unlike what I can read in the press, it's not at all to get rid of the pilots. It's not at all Airbus objective. 
It is to better assist the crew in managing the mission for the phase of flight where there is really a, a bigger challenge to have well-rested uh, pilots. It's not at all to get rid of them. It's to take benefit of safety, of technology, to further improve safety. Uh, I have in mind uh, a growing risk which we perceive, which we have all of us observed, runway collision. You have in mind, of course, the 350 uh, uh, Japan Airlines uh, uh, ground collision early this year in Tokyo with uh, uh, Coast Guard airplanes. Sadly, five fatalities on the Coast Guard airplanes. This risk of runway collision is really, really increasing. The traffic increasing as we can observe it, but the airport infrastructure and ATM capability to absorb the traffic may not be there everywhere. Therefore, we need to have the plane somewhere. So this risk of ground collision, the ground risk is, is really, really, really there. Technology will help, and, and uh, not later than uh, last week, we had a, a customer focus group in Toulouse to work on a system to alert the crew that there is traffic on runway or for the crew on the ground, traffic on approach. It's going to take some time, but it's going to be there. So really, it is another illustration that the technology opportunity will continue helping saving the day. And when looking at the number of, of the traffic trend we see, really, we want it. The second pillar of tomorrow's op opportunity, it is about the uh, collaboration, information uh, sharing. It is really an ascending journey, which for me, at the end of the day, is more difficult than the technology itself. Because when we talk about sharing, when we talk about learning, we talk about the soft aspect of the human. It's obvious that we cannot fix what we do not know. To know it, we need to have reports. We need to have mechanics talking to their management, pilots, etc. We need to have airlines reporting to us. We need to have all the stakeholders getting together and to share information. It's probably more, more, more difficult than the technology uh, uh, aspect, because we talk about really the soft aspect of the aviation dimension, which is the human. If I report of a mistake I've done, I could be afraid of sanction. I could be afraid of my peer who will have fun about me. I could be afraid of retaliation. I could be afraid of all sorts of things management sanction, an airline could be afraid of authority sanction. And I remember in 94, when we had our first Airbus Flight Safety Conference, discussing with airlines, we started to develop our own confidential reporting system, Courage Pilots, in particular, to report about operational events, which was really for us a, 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 a super potential source of information to improve the system. It takes a while. It takes a while. I've been able, we have been able to observe some improvement. We are not yet there. And for me, it is a positive news because it means that there is a, a potential, a big potential source of, of safety, relevant data to further improve safety. Uh, progressively, the industry is getting there. And I'm glad that we've, in Europe, we have uh, taken this, this road of going through the, I have in mind the data for safety program, which a number of you knows, which is led by, by IASA with uh, co-led IASA industry which is really to have this idea of sharing information at a regional, uh, regional level. We cannot undermine the power of sharing lessons learned, of sharing information. Uh, some of you know the story about the DHL. I, I've, I've explained it a number of times. I'm sorry for the one who knew it already. But DHL, it is this Baghdad uh, 300 before, which was shut down by a man pad at one of the Iraqi war. Massive fuel leak, loss of the free hydraulics. The only way to bring back the plane safely on the ground was to use the engine. And the captain did it. And when we invited the crew in Toulouse, he was telling us, you know what saved the day? It's because probably I've read the book some a while ago of the captain of the Sioux City United Airlines. You might remember this DC-10 uncontained uh, inferior leading to the free hydraulic loss, etc. I read the book. I learned sharing of information. It is so powerful to safety that this is really what I see as a strong opportunity for us as an aviation industry to really share openly things. I know it's difficult. I know there are some legal framework, etc., which can frighten people, but this is a, a, a collective and individual commitment that I'm absolutely convinced we need to, um, to take on board. 
I'd like to finish with the last point, the human dimension. Um, technology, it's a no-brainer. It's going to save, it has saved the day, it's going to continue to save the day. But technology with, without the human dimension, it's absolutely useless. The human dimension is absolutely critical. It's absolutely um, obvious, you said it, uh, Florian, it's all about the safety culture, which is really the, 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 the backbone of all what we do. And it starts by the top. I mean, for the one of us who work for a registered company, we have to comply with a, a huge number of requirements, ethic and compliance, export control, data governance, CSRD, da, 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 da. Are we sure that there is a requirement imposed to all the executives of all the aviation stakeholders in terms of, do you know what safety means? I'm not asking for a one week training. I'm looking at the regulators, <laughs> but it's everyone. It's not only the regulators. Uh, it's, it's maybe two hours, two hours of briefing just to teach all the executive and in particular the new executive joining uh, our various organizations who may not have an aviation background on the importance of safety. We shall never forget that the traveling public expects zero accident. And you said it, for the one of us who have been exposed in this big worst case scenario, and trust me, we don't want to be there. Um, it's really uh, something you absolutely want to avoid by any means. It's all about this safety culture element. It is all about the idea that safety, as aviation professional, safety is really our license to operate. Think about the number of people we transport every day, every year, and the traffic is increasing, uh, is increasing like uh, safety is our license to operate. I am absolutely convinced uh, about this. And the last point about the human dimension, I said it earlier, we, we still pay the consequences of the COVID crisis. We have lost across the board a number of experienced people. It takes time uh, uh, to upgrade, to upskill uh, the younger uh, uh, person not only younger in age, but younger in the aviation system. Uh, it takes a while, it is a journey, and I think it is a huge, huge investment we have all to do, considering the challenge ahead of us in terms of traffic demand, in terms of the need to evolve to meet the future environmental, the today environmental uh, 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 challenges. And I perceive in and there some challenges to attract new generation, which a number of them are more interested by being a YouTuber or soccer or Hollywood or whatever, or uh, Amazon. I hope there is no one from Amazon, by the way, or Google or whatever, rather than dreaming about aviation, as we all dream when we are younger. And I hope you are like me, you still dream about aviation, by the way. But I think it is a collective effort as well to make sure that the youngest generation dream again about aviation. We need those new talents. Considering the new opportunity from technology will come also with the new talents, with new ideas that uh, some of us may not have um, because we are less young. With this in mind, I wish you a too successful day and thank you very much. <laughs>